This is Oscar Bevis for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Johnny Nelson, my friend. Very good Thanks, to see man. you. Uh, mate, it was good to hear some polls of wisdom from you rather than me just throwing out heavyweight this, heavyweight that and listening to you talk. Um, well, not to me for once again. Uh, you know what? I actually, um, I'm just in a great position now where you can sit back and, and you learn by the mistake, every, everybody else's mistakes. And, um, and, and so I see how boxing is and where it is at the moment. Uh, I saw uh, an amazing lineup yesterday, which was brilliant. You know, if you're a boxing fan, if you're you're into our sport, you've got 12 different promoters in one room and the heads knocked together to say, let's get this done. Uh, His Majesty, he made sure he made he gave a pot of gold uh, to a, 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 a promoter to say, you know, an unbiased promoter to say, you know what, I'm not doing you a favour, you a favour, you a favour. This is on the table. Let's get in. And it couldn't have worked any other way. You couldn't give it. You couldn't give it. I don't know. You couldn't give it Eddie. You couldn't give it Frank. You couldn't give it one particular promoter because you know they'd be biased. So to see something like that, I thought I like that. I like that. I mean, we hear a lot of people kind of talk about the direction boxing is going in, and oh, mixed martial arts and UFC is taking over in this country, and we don't get the big fights. Mate, the last couple of years we've had more undisputed fights, more unified world title fights and bigger fights in this country than we have in years prior. I think it's just because of the heavyweights that people seem to have that narrative. But I'm not being funny, boxing is actually in a good place right now. It is, it is in a good place, but it needs something like what we saw yesterday or whenever this is shown for, for promoters to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. Get fights on. You know, it's show business, and unfortunately, the business was taking over the show, and the shows weren't the, the, the correct shows. The fights weren't happening, and and so now it, it did, did a position, a, a, an environment has been created where they, where it was impossible for these guys not to work together because the fighters now understand and think, you know what? I know my value. I want this, so you've got to make sure I'm in that tournament. So, and we we we've not seen it. So to me. I just think um, boxing it can, is in a good place. It can be in a better place, and and it, so it's up. To, it's our responsibility to make no the re- promoter's responsibility to make sure these things happen. We will talk about the card that we've got, but now we're on the topic. We might as well um, kick off with what we saw yesterday. Um, just like a just ridiculous seeing their names walk out. They all got their own little press conference mm-hmm. entrance. Seeing Wilder and Joshua up together. Seeing Eddie and Frank shake hands. Um, things that we haven't been able to see in boxing over decades um, seem to come together in the space of what they're talking about as in like a week. There was a lot of egos in that room and so to get those egos and in, in, egos in that room they must have been a big, big paycheck down there for them to humble themselves and that's exactly what happened. And so now it's get on with it, put up or shut up. There's no excuses. Put up or shut up and, 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 and anybody that doesn't, that doesn't put up, they'll be the one that are being divisive. Uh, so again, um, I think, you know, what I get as a fan, as an ex-fighter, um, it's a good thing to see for our sport. Yeah. Joshua Wallin, um, how do you break that down? A tough fight for Joshua considering they're kind of building towards him and Wilder. When you're normally building towards a fight, especially when you get two fighters on the same bill, they're normally fights that are massively favourable to the guys that they want to see go forward. Um, but Joshua Wallin is a close fight and a good fight. For both Joshua and Wilder, this is uh, a risky fight because if any, if they both believe they are still in a position uh, to uh, one of the fighters that, that are going to challenge for a world title, these guys need to get rid of these guys no matter what. They need to make sure they get the job done. So it's, it's a risk for both of them, for Wilder and for Joshua. And so you need to understand that. So there's no more pressure on one rather than the other. And, and, and once we get that into our heads, Anthony Joshua can't afford a slip up, neither can Wilder afford a slip up. You know, and, and, and because they know it's a great clash between those two, there may be a, a stronger possibility, if there, if there was ever a stronger possibility, of, of Tyson Fury getting in the mix as long as he gets through Usyk, which is announced today. So, so if there was ever a possibility, now's the time. Who's got the more difficult fight? Wilder with Parker or Joshua with Wallen? I think Joshua with Wallen. I think Joshua getting in there with a the southpaw. I think it's six weeks notice. I think Joshua with Wallen. I think Wilder has always had that TNT. You know, no matter how experienced the guy is in front of you, we've seen him in there with some experienced guys. I mean, can, inact- can inactivity get rid of that? Uh, yeah, but you don't know what these guys have been doing, doing behind the scenes. But I'll tell you one thing. Out of the whole lineup, 
The one that surprised me the most was Deontay Wilder. I thought he was class. He was cool. He was on it. You know, you thought, you know what? Respect there. This man, this man's, this man's. Uh, he, 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 he was polite. He was no, no. He was just, he just on it. I thought, went up in my estimations in, in regards to how he dealt with it. So in terms of Joshua, um, like you said, the southpaw, um, a difficult, tricky fight. I know we'll perhaps have little things in the back of his mind going back to the Usyk fight. I know that's a completely different fight. Um, but what sort of fight do you see kind of stylistically and how this would play out? Is he a fight Joshua could stop? I know they fought in the amateurs, but that was a while ago. How do you see this playing out? You know it's not actually, even in the amateurs, you know, while he, he's still got the timing, he's still got the movement. Uh, Joshua... Again, went in the amateurs. Joshua was a lot more. Uh, 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 he had a more, more, lot more of a trigger. Now he's been scarred by the the, the do's and don'ts in, in what can happen in boxing. He's got to go in there, get his job done, and get him out of there. Own his value. Own who he is. I'm glad he's he's fighting somebody else before he gets in with Wilder if that fight's happening, because he needs to make sure all the jigsaw puzzles are in place. So so Joshua needs to be strong. Needs to be on point. He needs to be completely comfortable and confident in everything he does because Wallen as a southpaw that, that, that has the timing will be smart and slippy enough to, to, uh, to make it hard, hard night's work for him.